Today we celebrate the Assumption of Mary into Heaven. There she goes before us with what will happen for each of us. And what is that? That she is body and soul taken into Heaven so that her body experiences no corruption. But rather, she is fullness of humanity in uh, Heaven. When we die, of course, what will happen? Our bodies will be separated from our souls and our souls will go to heaven and then, please God, I mean, that's our hope, right? We want them to go to heaven, but, uh, but it, we're going to be separated from our bodies in that time. But, but the promise is that on the last day, the dead will be raised. And we say this whenever we proclaim the Apostles' Creed, where we say we believe in the resurrection of the body, that our bodies then on that last day will be glorified and reunited with our souls and we will be fullness of humanity in that time. And so Mary goes before us as a sign of, because of her complete and total trust and to surrender to Almighty God, she is that image of what we shall be, the first fruits of we who have fallen asleep. And so with this, I was thinking about yesterday's feast day, which was St. Maximilian Kolbe. Now, St. Maximilian is my own uh, confirmation saint, so I have a great affinity for him. And one of the things that he said uh, in that in the midst of struggles to remember everything comes to us everything comes to us through the hands of Mary as long as it doesn't come from our own will but even if it comes from the evil will of another it comes through Mary's hands which means no matter how bad no matter how evil the circumstances she can always make something good come from it. Now, a lot of times we hear these sayings by the saints and we think, well, that's nice for someone who is uh, so holy and pious and, and up there floating in the clouds. But St. Maximilian lived a very on-the-ground life. He was a, a, a Polish man who, um, Polish priest, Franciscan, who uh, experienced in his young adulthood tuberculosis. And so he struggled with, uh, with sickness in a lot of that. And yet, in the midst of all this, he also knew that his mission was to proclaim the goodness of God moving through the hands of Mary. And so he started up a magazine and uh, struggled with getting new printing presses and all that. And then the friars in his friary saying, Your printing presses are making too much noise. Shut them down or move out. And so he had to come up with a whole new friary and find another space and find, okay, can we, get, can we get the land and build the friary and all these things. And so he did this. And in the midst of all this, he found great success. He actually had the biggest friary in the world at one point. But he wasn't, he wasn't satisfied with that. Not knowing anything about the culture or the language, he went over to Japan and uh, started up over there doing the exact same thing. And then he went to India and then finally came back to Poland before World War II broke out. Now, he was arrested as very early on in the, after uh, Germany had invaded Poland, but then he was released, but then a couple years later he again was arrested and brought into Auschwitz, that horrible concentration camp. And while there, at one point there was a prisoner that went missing. And because of that, they picked out ten people from the same block, from the same unit, that would die in the starvation bunker. After the cry of one of the men who said, my wife, my children, I'll never see them again. St. Maximilian steps forward. So much was this out of character that the commandant was actually frightened. He reached for his own sidearm, despite the fact that there were guards everywhere with machine guns and everyone there was frail and weak from lack of nourishment. And he said, I want to take someone's place in the starvation bunker. Who? The man with the wife and children. Why should I let you? He says, I'm just a Catholic priest. And he let him take the place. And for two weeks, 14 days, he suffered the pangs of starvation. That slow time. And yet was singing hymns and leading the other men in that starvation bunker to a greater closeness to Almighty God. But he didn't die quick enough for the Nazis 
And so they killed him with a with uh, lethal injection on August 14th, the day before the Assumption, the day before the woman's feast day that he had such a devotion and love for. St. Maximilian wasn't the, some pie-in-the-sky guy. He knew the reality of suffering and pain and turmoil even in the face of the Nazi concentration camps. And from that, he still said, everything that comes to us, comes to us through the hands of Mary. Even if it comes from the evil will of another, it comes through her hands. And so everything could be made for good. Everything can be made for good. And so he rejoiced with everything that came to him. I need to be reminded of this often, that we can have this trust in Mary. That no matter what happens, she has our back. That she will make the worst of things turn for the greatest of good, because that's a role that God has poured into her and allowed her to play in our lives. So my sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the Assumption of Mary, she who trusted so completely in Almighty God, let us look to her, let us look to St. Maximilian Kolbe, and let us have that trust that no matter what happens, no matter how bad things get, no matter what happens from the evil will of the people around us or the evil circumstances, Mary has us in her hands and she's taking care of everything.